Hey guys, do I remind you of anyone from camp? This is my Miss Ng impersonation in her sleeping bag. Um, I don't know how many of you, I don't think a lot of you got to see that, but you'll have to ask about that because that was pretty amazing. Um, in this section we're talking about, uh, we're looking at finally introducing the term probability. So last section we just used the word likelihood, but likelihood is kind of a synonym for the probability of an event, and that's the chance that the event will occur. So a simple event is one outcome or a collection of outcomes. For instance, tossing a coin, spinning a spinner, if I ask you to pick a card from a deck of cards, um, and you do one of these things, you're conducting one trial of what we call a probability experiment. Now you can use the results of the experiment to compare the number of favorable outcomes to the total number of outcomes, and this is what we call the relative frequency of the event. So let's look at, um, these are some terms related to the field of probability that you would commonly use. So relative frequency is the ratio of the number of favorable outcomes to the number of total outcomes in, a, in an experiment. Um, and what we mean is something like this. Um, the favorable outcomes, what if I said, if I want to flip a coin and get heads? Well, heads, there's one favorable outcome, heads, and then the total number of outcomes is two because there are two sides to that. So watch this quickly to learn how you find the relative frequency of an event. You are given a table of experimental data and asked to find the relative frequency of getting a strawberry star. To find relative frequency, start by writing a ratio. The relative frequency of an event is the ratio of the number of times an event occurs to the number of trials in the experiment. In this case, the number of times the event occurs is 36 because 36 of Lewis's fruit stars were strawberry flavor. The number of trials in the experiment is 80 because Lewis selected a total of 80 fruit stars. Next, simplify the ratio. You can do this in the same way you would simplify a fraction. The last step is to write the relative frequency as a fraction, decimal, and a percent. You can convert this fraction to a decimal or percent by writing an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 100. The relative frequency of getting a strawberry star is 9 twentieths, or 45 hundredths, or 45 percent. Um, you can also just use your calculator and do 9 divided by 20, so you don't have to convert it or anything like that. Um, you guys can use calculators. So really quick, we're going to look through several examples today. Um, a number cube with sides labeled 1 through 6 is rolled 20 times. The number 5 is rolled 4 times. What is the relative frequency of rolling a five? So really all you're going to do is take the total number of rolls, um, and actually we'll do this a little bit simpler than the book does it. So how many times did we roll the die? And how many favorable outcomes or fives did we get? And that's your relative frequency, and that's really it. And as a decimal, you can plug this in your calculator. Five twentieths, if we simplify this, is one-fourth. So as a fraction, you guys should know the equivalent as a decimal, and then 20.25 is 25 percent. So you should be able to write your relative frequencies all these different ways. Fraction, decimal, percent. We'll start with the fraction because that's the one you're going to use to write the relative frequency, and then again from here it's just be able, being able to convert excuse me, fractions to decimals to percents. You can just use your calculator, 1 divided by 4, or you should know 1 fourth is 0.25 or 25%. So you guys try the um, check problem. See if you can figure that out. You can also find relative frequency from tables. So a group of students went to the zoo. The frequency table shows the results of a survey about their favorite exhibit. What is the relative frequency of the favorite exhibit being either penguins or bears? So now in this case, they tallied each student's results and here's the total. So the first thing you're going to have to do is find the total number of students surveyed. 
So in this case, we need to know how many students there were. So we would add up 6 plus 17 plus 21 plus 13 plus 13. And there are 70 students all together here. So now we need to know how many students chose penguins or bears. So bears is 6, penguins is 13. So that's 19 all together. So then our relative frequency is just 19 over the total, 70. And 19 over 70 is 0.27 as a um, decimal. And move the decimal two places to the right to get 27% as a percentage here. So you don't have to use like the steps here that they use. They kind of go about it a little bit. Um, a little bit more difficult way of doing that. So we'll pause and try example two now. We can also find relative frequency from graph. This is the results of an experiment in which a spinner with three equal sections is sp spun a number of times. What's the relative frequency of spinning green or blue for this experiment? So again, we are going to have to start by figuring out how many of each spins we got. So this spinner had three equal sections, but you can see that it didn't land equally on those sections. So we want to start by first figuring out red. If you look, the red goes up to number 14. Okay, my computer is very slow today. And the green goes up to, it looks like 24. You can maybe tell better in your books. And the blue goes up to 22. So how many spins were there all together? Well, there were 14 plus 24 plus 22. So 14 plus 24 plus 22 is 60. Now the question was, how many times did we get green or blue? So how many times did it land on green or blue? You guys can add that really quick. And then what do we put that over? That number goes over the total number of spins, 60. So green or blue, 24 plus 22 is 46. And that number goes over 60. And we could simplify this to 23 over 30. Divide each of these by 2. And 23 over 30, you guys can just use your calculator, is 0.77 rounded correctly, or 77%. So 77% of the time we got green or blue, which means maybe like, maybe the red was a little stuck. Maybe it didn't quite spin to the red as often as it should. Um, and so now we are on, you guys do the check problem at the bottom of 519. And now we're going to look at um, frequency tables and bar graphs. So suppose 100 people are asked their blood type. And this is what the results were. If I want to find the relative frequency for each blood type, then I'll just take each one and divide by the um, total number of people surveyed. So in this case, I'm going to find the relative frequency of each blood type. 40 over 100 is the relative frequency for A, 5 over 100 AB, 10 over 100 B, 45 over 100 O. And then if we simplify this um, or change these to fractions. Let's see if I can get this one to pull up. This will be easier than trying to type it. Oh, that's, I have an internet connection. Why does it say I don't? Okay, anyway, um, if you look at the table on page 520, okay, so look there, in the middle is the relative frequency table. So you see that all it does is take that same table at the top and then it just puts the relative frequency as a fraction and a decimal right next to it. And then we can also make a relative frequency bar graph from that. So what we would do is just, if we have blood type and relative frequency, we can, um, oh, there it is. Okay, here's our relative frequency table. All right, 
we can take each of those and then just make a bar up to that. So type A, um, the bar goes up to here. Oh, here we go. Oh, I gotta fill it all in. Type B, the relative frequency was 0.1%, or 0.1, which is 10%. A, B was this, and O goes all the way up to here. So there's our relative frequency for that one. Um, and then you can see that from here, type O is the most common blood type, type A, and then B and AB. And actually, I have AB, so I'm down here in this little small section right there. Um, so now we're going to look at what is the difference between experimental probability and relative frequency. Um, the relative frequency of an event can be used to predict the chance that the event occurs in the future. So the chance that the future event will occur is called experimental probability, but it's the same as the relative frequency. So relative frequency is, I did this before, um, what did I get? And experimental probability is, well, if I keep doing this in the future, what will I get? So experimental is still the ratio of the number of favorable outcomes to the total number of outcomes. And we use this notation for um, probability. So the probability that the event will occur is the number of favorable times the number of out. So if, again, going back to coins, what's the probability of heads? Well, there's one heads out of two total sides. So that's my probability, my experimental probability, also my relative frequency of the event. So pro experimental, relative frequency, same thing, same exact values, but relative frequency re refers to, I did this before, this is what I got, now experimental in the future, if I keep doing this, what would I expect to get? Um, so now go to page, uh, 521, and so you can kind of see the similarities there. Similarities are the ratio of the number of favorable outcomes, so the total number of outcomes, in this case it would be one half, and then the difference is relative frequency describes an event that already occurred, whereas experimental is the chance of the event happening in the future based on what has already occurred. So let's go to page 522 and look at just a couple more examples here for experimental probability now. It's getting really warm in here. Um, I don't know how Miss Ng stayed wrapped up in her little cocoon for so long. Anyway, here's our relative frequency bar graph. So type A blood, 40%, type B, type A, we already looked at this. Um, find the relative frequency of type A or type B. So if I want to find the relative frequency of type A or type B, it would be 0.4 plus 0.1, which is 0.5. I don't know why none of these are working for me. Um, so I'll just use my finger here. A, this is on the middle of page 522, 0.4 plus 0.1. So the total would be 0.5, okay? So the experimental probability is the same ratio as the relative frequency. So if I chose a random person, what's the probability that that person would have type A or type B blood is what the question is. So if I pick a person at random, the chance that they would have type A is 50%. So look at the bar graph at the bottom of page 522, that check problem, see if you can figure that one out, and we will definitely be talking about all of these in class if they don't make sense, but I want you to see what you can do. So, um, baseball. You guys know how batting averages are found? You find the number of hits divided by their number of at-bats. So, their baseball average is found by writing 4189 over their career at-bats, 11434. So, um, there's a few ways we can make predictions. So if this is this player's batting average, if he gets to bat at 500 times in a season, how many hits would we expect him to get? So again, I'm gonna show you um, a little bit differently than the book. So first of all, what's the relative frequency? Number of favorable outcomes. He hit it this many times out of this many at-bats, okay? So 4189 
divided by this gives us, in batting averages, we usually go to three decimal places. So he has a .366, which is fairly decent for a baseball player. It's not that bad. So now, if this was his you know, average over the last several seasons, and we expect him to be at bat 500 times this next season, um, how many hits do we expect him to make? Well, all you have to do is multiply this batting average times his number of at-bats, okay? And we get, when we multiply that, when we multiply 0 0.366 times 500, then we would expect him to hit it about 183 times. So we're just going to take his relative frequency times his expected number of total hits, and that's going to give us how many at-bats we expect him to get. And then if I take 183 divided by 500, we're going to see that that is also that same batting average of 0.366. So the book goes about it a different way. You can read through it, but I think this might be a little bit simpler way for you guys to figure out and make predictions. So that's all we have for this section. Try the check problems on the bottom of 522 and 524, and don't forget to get a parent signature. That's mine. On page 524, there's a big old box that they can sign in and you can sign your name as well and then I know that you have watched this and that would be amazing. Okay, that's all we've got for now.